The Sims 4 is a pretty huge game with a lot of packs, so I decided to make an ultimate guide. Obviously, some things you may find useful, other things you may not find useful, so I've actually put timestamps in the video, so feel free to skip to the bits that you want to. Just to clarify for the noobs, The Sims 4 is a very capitalistic game. You have the base game, which is basically the stripped down version, and then you have the packs to add on to that to make it more interesting. I would say in general, you would need at least two packs to make the game fun. The base game alone is certainly not enough. It's all right to mess around with, but it's not enough. And one very important disclaimer to give off the back of that is I do not recommend buying any of the Sims 4 packs unless they are on sale, including the base game. The base game is often up to 80% off on sale. Generally, expansion packs can be up to 50% off, game packs 30 to 40% off, stuff packs 10 to 20% off. So please, please, please wait for a sale. There is a sale on the Sims 4 every other minute. So please just be patient and wait for one if there isn't one already. Ready. If you want to buy The Sims 4, you can buy it on consoles and you can buy it on PC. If you're buying it on PC, you need to download it via the Origin Store. You have to download the Origin app to do that. It works on lower end laptops, but it won't be graphically beautiful as it would be on a higher end PC. So if you have a crusty laptop that sounds like it's going to explode and take off every time you turn it on, maybe it's better to play it on console if you have a PS4 or Xbox, but that is for you to decide. So there are four main types of packs, expansion packs, game packs, stuff packs and kits. As you may or may not know, The Sims 4 basically has three main game modes, which is the cast mode where you create your sim and you style them and make them, etc. You have the build by mode where you build things and decorate things. And then you have the live mode where you basically play the game. With an expansion pack, you generally get a lot of create a sim items, so clothes. You also get a lot of build by items like furniture and decorations. And you also usually get a world to live in and you usually get a lot of gameplay. A game pack is basically a stripped down version of an expansion pack, whereas an expansion pack might come with a really big world with lots of lots. A game pack will have a much smaller world and it will have smaller, more isolated gameplay that's a little bit more detailed, but very tunnel vision funneled into one very specific theme. And it may have some build by objects in that theme and some clothing, but it's more so focused on the gameplay. Stuff packs, again, are much smaller. Stuff packs generally just come with build by items, create sim items, and one very small, tiny bit of gameplay that doesn't really add that much. Kits add clothing or they add build by items. These are very, very small and very, very cheap. These are the more niche things. If you are looking to buy a pack on Origin, you can actually get a three for one deal where if you buy an expansion pack, game pack and stuff pack together, you get them in a bundle price. If you can afford to do that, I personally recommend that because then you get a little bit of everything. Starting off with the expansion packs in release order, we have Get to Work. Get to Work is a pack about going to work, funnily enough. It comes with three apps of careers, which means you can follow your Sims to their job in the day and actually do the work with them. Usually careers in The Sims 4 are a rabbit hole experience, which means you can't actually follow them to work. So this is a pretty cool idea. The three main careers are a scientist career, a detective career, and a doctor career. All these careers are pretty fun and there's actually a lot of features in this pack. This pack comes with aliens of all things and it comes with a secret world that you can get to if you go high enough in the science career, which is pretty cool. It also comes with the retail system, which doesn't exist in the base game. The retail system allows you to go to shops and buy things, but it also allows you to run your own shop as a business. It's quite a fun thing because the shop system, you can basically sell almost any item and it's really customizable and you can build your own shops. The world that comes with Get to Work is an extension of the base game world Willow Creek. Unfortunately, it only has four lots, making it the smallest expansion pack world. Their lots are not designed to be livable, they're shops. So it comes with three shops that are already there and it comes to the place you can create a custom one or you can just knock down the other shops. It's completely up to you. For today's video, I actually made the effort to make charts to help you with the cast and build buy things. So for get to work, you can see that there is a lot of create a sim items compared to the other packs. These create a sim items are very corporate. It's not really clothes that you would wear every day, but it's all right. In terms of build buy objects, it's pretty average, although it contains quite a lot. Again, the build buy items for this pack are very corporate. They're designed for like workplace environments, but the main feature of this pack is the gameplay and it's one of my favorite packs personally. The next expansion pack is Get Together. Get Together has a huge world. This world has over 25 lots, making it the biggest world in The Sims 4 to date. It's inspired by Germany and this pack has a lot of stuff. The actual gameplay of this pack is very subtle. It's a game pack about basically joining clubs. You can make a chess club, you can make a nightclub dance crew, you can make a homework club, 
up for kids. You can make a painting club. This is a really great pack that's very subtle but adds a lot of depth to the gameplay, especially with the club system. It just gives your game a lot more depth and character and gives you something to do with your sims lives and it comes with a lot, a lot, a lot of build buy. As you can see it's one of the highest packs on the chart. A lot of the build buy for this pack is very vanilla which is a good thing because it can apply to many different worlds and many different situations. It doesn't have much cast. Unfortunately The Sims 4 was released eight years ago and they weren't really woke when it came to fashion back then. So a lot of the cast is quite bad in the earlier packs but this is a really great one if you just want a subtle addition to your gameplay without going really crazy with a brand new pack idea. This is personally one of my favourite packs and I know a lot of other Sims YouTubers really love get together themselves but again it is a very subtle one. It doesn't add anything groundbreaking it more so just makes the experience a little bit more fulfilled. The next expansion pack is City Living. This is actually my favourite expansion pack. Funnily enough this pack focuses on the city life. Almost every single lot in the city world is full of apartment buildings. It's the only real pack that you can really experience having an apartment in full detail. Any pack in The Sims 4 that is something living like city living, cottage living, any of these like living packs are about living in this kind of isolated world where there's a lot of things going on. So with the city living world it has festivals which is a really cool feature. Each area in the city world is known for different kinds of festivals and things to do. The first area which is the spice market which has the spice festival, flea market and Dockland views. The arts quarter which is known for the humour and hijinks festival. We then have the fashion district which is home to the romance festival and the geek con festival. And then you have uptown which is a Tory area because every single Sims 4 world has a Tory area. The gameplay of this pack comes with a couple of careers including being able to become a politician and eventually the prime minister or president of the Sims 4 world which is kind of cool. Compared to other packs it doesn't come with much creative sims stuff although I would say the creative sims stuff in this pack is very diverse. The theme with this pack is very very multicultural. It's very colourful. It comes from so many different cultures. The build buy for this pack is also very strong. It comes with a very unique mix of ethnic things, things from many different cultures but it also comes with a lot of modern stuff too. So in that sense it is a very diverse pack which is why it's my favourite. The next pack is Cats and Dogs. Cats and Dogs comes with the world of Brindleton Bay. I love the Brindleton Bay world. I think it's really really cool. It's got some really lovely areas and a decent sized map too. Obviously one of the key things about this is having cats and dogs. Cats and dogs in The Sims 4 are okay. You can do random things like you can make them do tricks. You can also send them to the vet if they're ill. You can even run your own veterinary clinic if you wanted to. In that sense it's a pretty cool pack. I think it's a fun bit of gameplay and it can apply to any world. You can have pets wherever you like. I wouldn't say having pets is a groundbreaking experience. It's more so just a subtle addition to your gameplay if you want to have a cat or dog in your household. This pack comes with a lot of creative sim items. A lot of this is for cats and dogs, not just humans. It also comes with a lot of build buy. It kind of has, I don't know how to describe it, but do you know what I mean when I say a shipwrecked theme? <laughs> like ships and things, a harbour theme. It has that kind of theme, lighthouse theme. I wouldn't know what to call it. I think you know what I mean though. And hence why it's one of the most popular packs. The next expansion pack is Seasons, which again is an extremely popular pack. This pack comes with absolutely no new worlds. Instead, it basically adds seasons to the game. At the start of this video, I did say The Sims 4 is a capitalistic cash grabby game. That is because they literally make you pay for weather. The only groundbreaking feature that the seasons pack comes with really is weather. Every single world will have spring, summer, autumn, winter. The reason why this pack doesn't come with a brand new world is because it affects all the other worlds. It affects each world differently depending on its climate. So the Oasis Springs world in the base game, you know, it's not going to snow there because it's a desert. So they do take these things into consideration. The only bit of gameplay that it does come with that's not in the base game, which I think is pretty cool, is that it comes with the ability to hold your own holidays. By holidays, I mean Christmas, Easter, Halloween. You can also create custom holidays. Granted, it is a little bit limited and you have to get creative if you want to make custom ones, but you can do it. Unfortunately, it annoys me to say this, but I do feel like this pack is kind of necessary just because weather is a pretty important thing in life simulation game but you have to pay for it as a big expansion pack which is very cash grabby. I did give you the disclaimer The Sims 4 is a cash grabby game but I do recommend this pack if you can afford it just because it adds that extra detail and depth to your game. It comes with an average amount of crate sim items and mostly it's weather related. It adds two new outfit categories which is outdoor wear for when it's hot and outdoor wear for when it's cold. It also comes with some 
one build buy. I actually think the build buy in this pack is pretty cool. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it, it's decent. It kind of gives me log cabin vibes, but the main feature of this pack is just the seasons and it comes with some seasonal gameplay. For example, you can have a paddling pool. You can make snowmen. You can rake the autumn leaves and have adult fun time in a pile of autumn leaves if you wanted to. You can go ice skating. It just adds some random seasonal activities. Get Famous is the next expansion pack. This one comes with the world of Dalsol Valley. Many people have argued that this world is quite small. The whole point of this pack, I'm sure you can guess, is about getting famous. It comes with two systems, which is a reputation system and a fame system. So you can be a celebrity, but you can be famous for good reasons or bad reasons. So it's quite complex in that sense. Like with the Get to Work pack, this comes with an active career, which is the acting career. It also comes with a social media star career where you can be a YouTuber, which is pretty cool. The fame system is integrated in other packs, so you can be famous for a variety of different things. So it's very creative in that sense. Being an author, for example, is a base game thing, but you can become famous as an author. The pack actually comes with a fame point system, which is really, really cool. The bigger the celebrity you are, the more points you get. And with these fame points, you can unlock certain things you can do as a celebrity. It's a really, really cool system the celebrities in The Sims 4. Unfortunately, the world itself doesn't have very flattering lots. This is the house of Judith Ward, who is the most famous celebrity in The Sims land. As you can see, it looks very, very trashy and it is giving basic vibes, which is something that's apparent in a lot of The Sims 4 worlds, by the way. Unfortunately, a lot of the builds in the base game are quite bad and you have to replace it with new ones. But that aside, it's a very, very cool pack. Unfortunately, in the world, it only actually comes with two bars, which is very strange. And I almost wish it came with more because the whole point is about going to a famous hotspot bar and maybe meeting a celebrity. So unfortunately, you do have to kind of recreate the world with new things. But the actual gameplay element is really, really fun. Get Famous comes with an average amount of crate sim items. The items are very much pretentious celebrity. You know how celebrities in those million dollar mansions often have like weird alien furniture. It comes with a lot of that. It comes with extravagant things, very luxurious gold things. It comes with the gold toilet. So yeah, it's a very, very cool pack when it comes to build buy. It comes with a lot of crate sim items. Most of this is like formal wear for celebrities like gowns, but it also comes with a lot of fancy dress. So it's not regular stuff that your Sims could wear in the real world. It's only real stuff that you'd wear if you're like a proper big celebrity or it's just stuff that you would wear if you're in the acting career. But a lot of it isn't usable for every day, but it is still quite fun if you want to have a celebrity Sim Let's Play. The next one is Island Living. As another pack ending in the word living, it's an isolated bit of gameplay for a very specific area in the game known as the world of Solani. Solani is just a very big beachy area. Some people love this pack, other people hate this pack. The world itself is really beautiful, but every single area of the world basically looks exactly the same. So there's not really much variety in the world, unfortunately, although it is a very big world and there is a lot of going on. This world comes with a really cool build feature, which is that you can build over water. You can only build over water in this very specific world, by the way. You can go sailing in the water, but only in this world. You can go fishing in special spots only in this world. There's a lot of cool features, but the features only apply in the specific world. That's where a lot of people criticize it, but I honestly don't think it's a problem. There's nothing wrong with an isolated bit of gameplay as long as it's really fun. As you can see, it also comes with this square here where there's actually a lot of festivals going on sometimes, kind of like the city living world. In that sense, it is really cool. The creator sim for this world is very much islandy vibey stuff. It reminds me a lot of Hawaii, for example. It's very tropical and I really, really like it. It's very specific and fun. The build buy as well, it doesn't come with much build buy, but the build buy is very, very cool as well. The pack also comes with careers and it's about basically fixing the environment. It's an environmentally friendly pack of cleaning up the trash and the beach, etc., and making the island more pretty. In that sense, I think it's a fun pack. It also comes with mermaids, funnily enough. Mermaids in this pack are pretty cool. They're not in depth like other occults. It doesn't have a skill tree system or anything. They're just something fun to mess around with. You can't really use mermaids outside of the island living world. So it is a very niche in a bubble pack. But for what it's worth, for that little bubble of gameplay, I'd say it's really fun. You can also visit there on vacation, by the way. In fact, you can visit any Sims 4 world on vacation. So you don't just have to live there. You can just visit there for a few days if you wanted to. The next pack we've got is Discover University. The name of the pack speaks for itself in terms of what the gameplay entails. The world comes with two separate universities, both based off British culture. We've got the University of Brychester, which is a very old traditional university, the Tory University, like Oxford and Cambridge in the United Kingdom. We also have the Fox 
Asprey Institute, which is a like younger, hip, modern university. You can choose which one you go to. Each university specializes in certain different subjects, but you can go to either. The world itself to live in is relatively smaller, only comes with two lots, but it doesn't really matter because the main vibe of this world is living in the university itself. You have the university dormitory, you have the commons area. It also comes with societies, which is cool. You can join like a uni society in a certain field. I would say this is a really great pack for splitting up gameplay. So when your sim ages up from a teen to a young adult, you can bring them to university. I will say the university gameplay is very unnecessarily tough. I think the Sims team did it deliberately in order to make it like real life university. In that sense, if you are playing with the university world, you can actually choose how many modules you do each semester. I actually recommend only doing one or maximum of two because that gives you enough time to do other things in the game, like having house parties, joining a society, doing a sports club. You can't do everything at once, but I think it's a really, really great pack. I also recommend turning aging off, which you can do in the settings of the game, by the way. It's very, very easy. That way you can spend a long time on university without having to worry about your Sims dying because that can happen, unfortunately. The pack comes with a lot of creative Sim fashion. It is very university inspired. In that sense, it is quite millennial in a way, actually. It is quite millennial, but it's got typical things that you would imagine wearing at university, like a tracksuit and joggers. Do you know what I mean? It comes with an okay amount of build buy, not that much compared to other packs. It's very much just build by made to do the university world. It is very like, I want to say classroomy. It's not build stuff that you would use in an ordinary house. Like it's build stuff that you would use in a university area. But if you like building up university commons, you can actually change it all by the way, which is pretty cool. So the build by is all right. In all, I'd say it's a pretty cracking pack. The next expansion pack is Eco Lifestyle. The world itself is relatively big and comes with three main areas. And this pack is all about cleaning up the environment. You can see the world map here. It looks very pristine and fresh in this upper area. In the lower area, you can see the brown bits of smog. This pack is all about dealing with the environment. You can either make the environment really smoggy and horrible, or you can make it really, really clean and pure. It's up to you how you go about it. It comes with a couple of careers that relate to the environment and construction. It also comes with community space slots, which are lots that can change depending on policies. Policies is a new feature that comes with this pack. You can decide different kind of local policies where your sims live. Most players find these policies very annoying. For example, the pack comes with the policy to make sims have paper bags over their head. But in order to change the policies, you need to gain influence points, which you can get by sorting out the environment in the specific area. I would say the pack is a very unique concept and I'm not sure if everybody would like it. So it's entirely up to you. I personally enjoy it because I like affecting the world around me and changing the environment in different ways. But I know some people don't like that. So it just depends on you. The creator sim for this pack is average. Although I will say, is it a little bit traumatizing. I know I said I wouldn't give my opinion, but there is a lot of denim, like a lot of denim in this pack. And I'm not sure how I feel about the denim. It's not really that fashionable. Some of it's all right. It is just very, very strange, the fashion in this pack. I personally wouldn't use it myself very often. In fact, I don't ever use it, but each their own, I guess. It comes with an average to low amount of build buy stuff. The build buy is actually quite modern. I really like the build buy. I would say some of it is quite lofty in a way. It's quite industrial, which I like. But in all, it's a pretty solid pack. The next pack is Snowy Escape. Snowy Escape is a pack inspired by Japan. The world is very cool. It comes with a very Japanese inspired world. Snowy Escape is very much like the living packs in that it's an isolated bubble experience. It comes with little street festivals and things like the other living packs. The main part of this pack is about the lifestyle choices where you live a certain lifestyle. All of these lifestyle things are built around winter sports. You can go skiing, you can go snowboarding. You can climb a mountain if you would like to. You can go on adventurous walks. It is very much like a holiday destination pack. You can live there, not just as a holiday destination, but it's entirely up to you how you play it. Many simmers say the pack is very shallow and that you can't really do much. And what I think they mean by that is you basically just watch your sims perform an animation. Like you make them snowboard and they do an animation of them snowboarding, but that's all it really is. It's an animation. It's not really gameplay. You just look at them do things. In in that sense, I will say the pack is unfortunately quite shallow. The creator sim items for this pack are very much winter wear because it is a snowy world, hence being called Snowy Escape. Although if you own the Seasons pack, you already own winter wear, so it kind of renders it a little bit useless, but it contains an average amount of cast compared to the other packs. The build buy is very Japanese inspired. There isn't really much Asian inspired architecture in The Sims 4, so Snowy Escape is the only place you can really get that. I personally, think the build by stuff is really 
cool. It's very niche and I really, really like it. It works generally only really quite well in the snowy escape world. But if you wanted to make, for example, a Japanese star restaurant in other worlds, then you could do that. So the next expansion pack is Cottage Living. Cottage Living has a very British inspired world called Henford upon Bagley. It's based on the British countryside. If you know Beatrix Potter, it's kind of like that. It's all about living in the countryside, growing your own vegetables. You can have like a mini farm area where you can own a cow pen or a llama pen or a chicken pen and you can live off the land. You can buy groceries. You can grow all of your own food. You can do vegetable competitions. Who grows the biggest aubergine? Like all the other living packs, it's an isolated bit of gameplay. I guess you could do some things like owning a farm or farming in different worlds in The Sims 4. So in that sense, it is very open and cool. The world itself is very samey. I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit shallow in that there's not really much to do. There is an NPC who you can do certain missions with, which is basically just collecting things. It is very side questy and it doesn't really reward you that much. But I would say to be fair, the world is pretty fun. And if you're interested in more of the kind of farming style gameplay, I'd say it's quite a strong pack for that. It comes with an average amount of creative sim items. Again, they are very much country bumpkin, British inspired creative sim items. It comes with a very small amount of build buy, but the build buy is very, very niche to the British countryside style. So it is for building cottages. The pack is all right. It comes with some fun random gameplay ideas. Like it comes with cross stitching, I believe. It's, it's just a country living pack. Like everything stereotypical about the countryside, you can live that with the pack. The next pack is high school years. This is a pack about going to high school. The world itself is just an average size expansion pack world for The Sims 4. It comes with some amazing areas actually, especially the pier area is really, really beautiful. The pack is all about being a teenager. You can follow your Sims to high school. It works in a very similar way to the active careers in Get to Work in that you basically follow your teen Sim to school and you get them to do certain things at school. I did do a full on review recently. Unfortunately, my review was actually four out of 10. And I, that's because I felt like the gameplay is very shallow. It comes with a lot of cool gameplay. So just to confirm, it does come with, for example, the ability to go to a bubble tea thrift store where you can get bubble tea, but you can also buy thrifting clothes. It comes with a fashion career where you can basically sell things on the Sims version of Debop and you can create outfits to sell. It comes with the ability to be a streamer if you wanted to. In terms of the school itself, it comes with the ability to go to prom. It comes with the ability to have a graduation ceremony and things. So it contains a lot of features. It's just the features that exist, I feel, are very, very shallow. The gameplay experience is not very in-depth or fun. And of the things that are there, they're very glitchy. They're very poorly put in. The pack has a lot of bugs, which unfortunately the Sims team have not addressed or bothered to fix yet or stated that they're going to fix them. To be truthful to you guys, the Sims 4 is kind of at the end of its lifespan. I feel like in my personal opinion, I know I said I wouldn't give my personal opinion, but to give you a background story based on how my feelings are, I feel like the Sims team are kind of giving up on the game and they're releasing packs in a very sloppy way. So unfortunately, some of the later packs, including a lot of game packs, which I'll talk about later, are very sloppily put together. And this pack was unfortunately. Hopefully it will be fixed in the future. But for now, I personally don't recommend the pack unless you're really, really big on having team gameplay. Gameplay aside, the creative sim for this pack is very good. It's very, very Gen Z. It's the most Gen Z cast I've ever seen. And it is very trendy stuff. The build by is all about having a team bedroom. It's all build by about decorating the team's room, making it look really, really cool. So in that sense, it is a very team focused pack. So if you do like team gameplay, maybe you can get it. But right now, I just feel like it's too shallow to say, yes, go out and buy it. Game packs. That's right. I am recording this video on a separate day. That's right. I am wearing a Greg's top. So the first ever game pack release for The Sims 4 was Outdoor Retreats. As the first ever game pack, I'm not going to lie. There's not that much stuff in the pack, unfortunately. It comes with the world of Granite Falls. You can't live in the world. It's a vacation only world. The whole purpose of this map is to basically go on vacation. And of course, the whole theme around it is camping. Funnily enough, almost every single lot in this entire world has a log cabin or basically a home that your Sims could stay in. It doesn't really come with that many interactions. It comes with random things like camping and stargazing, but it's not the most in-depth pack in the world. The pack comes with herbs and it comes with insects that you can collect and you can develop a herbalism skill to create potions to, for example, cure an insect bite. But there's not really that much to do with the pack, to be honest. In terms of 
the amount of crate a sim it contains an average amount and it's just camping gear in terms of build buy it doesn't really come that much i would say it's probably one of the weaker game packs the next one is spa day spa day was originally another very weak game pack but they did actually update it with a lot of cool new stuff unlike other packs it doesn't actually come with a brand new world but it comes with a new spa lot where your sims can basically do spa things like massages like facials for example the pack comes with a brand new wellness skill which is basically a skill about going through yoga and meditation and things there's massage chairs massage tables you've got incense sticks with this pack of all things you've got yoga mats you've got a sauna comes with a few new aspirations your sims can also make money with this pack they can offer manicures and pedicures they can offer yoga classes they can offer massages so it works both ways the pack actually comes with an okay amount of cash i'd say it's more like sparse stuff so it's basically stuff that's mostly in the fitness category it's not everyday wear stuff but it's stuff that suits the theme of the pack the build buy of this pack is actually really strong if you like building and you like modern builds this pack comes with a lot of modern stuff that i think you would really like even though this pack doesn't come with a world i would actually say it's quite an in-depth and well-rounded pack die now is the next sims 4 game pack this is perhaps one of the most controversial game packs for the sims 4 and that's because when it was first released it just didn't really work at all the gameplay although it's really fun gameplay it just doesn't really work that well just to clarify dying out like with spa day doesn't come with a new world but instead comes with a brand new lock type which is restaurants your sims can go to restaurants they can go on dates they can choose a free course meal or they can just have one little thing you can build your own restaurants you can own your own restaurant and run it as a business which is cool i know a lot of people love the idea of having a restaurant that you can run from your own house just to confirm with dine out you cannot own a restaurant in your residential house area it must be separate you also cannot employ your family members so you have to employ random npcs to work at the restaurant for you just to clarify because i know a lot of people ask the pack doesn't really come with much crate a sim stuff as you can see it's very small it just comes with basically restaurant outfits like a waiter's outfit or a chef outfit it comes with quite a lot of build buy all of this build buy is centered around a restaurant you cannot really use it in residential builds but it's still pretty cool the concept of dine out is really really fun and i actually tested it in a recent youtube video testing how badly it would glitch out it did glitch out a little bit but it wasn't that bad they have tried really hard to fix it but it's one of those packs where you have to play in speed one because you know in the sims 4 there's three speed settings one two and three how quickly your game moves if you play dine out in anything higher than speed one then the game really can't keep up with the simulation and it just goes kaboom and even after my video where i posted where i actually found that it mostly works other people still commented on my video and said that it didn't work for them so please be aware that dine out is known for being a very glitchy pack it is notorious for not working at all but if you're a builder and you like the idea of building restaurants i say it's okay if you are very patient and you only play the sims in speed one setting and you don't go any higher you might be able to get dine out to work for you but unfortunately it, it is something that's not really that well made unfortunately the next release pack is vampires which is our first occult pack vampires is about you guessed it bloody vampires oh i said bloody bloody vampires that was an accidental pun the vampires pack comes with the world of forgotten hollow forgotten hollow is a dark and gloomy world it has five lots including this iconic lot for the count daddy vladdy vampires in the sims 4 are actually very in depth you can see their needs are slightly different so they've got vampire energy which is basically run by blood they've got thirst they also got a skill tree system you don't automatically unlock every single vampire ability you have to earn them doing things as a vampire and then you get points to spend on whatever you like you also have vampire weaknesses every single vampire has its own special weakness that you must take which i think is cool it's really great because it individualizes every kind of vampire that you would play with this pack comes with a decent amount of cast and it is very very specific cast to vampires it's very gothic it's very out there it's not like vanilla cast which is why it's a part of a supernatural pack the build by this pack is actually really strong even if you're a builder and you don't really like occult sims it comes with a lot of old victorian style architecture it comes with a lot of old-fashioned victorian style build by objects so i'd say it's a pretty strong pack overall in all categories the next release pack is parenthood parenthood is a very strange one because most people don't really understand what it actually is parenthood is 
focus on this concept of character values. These being manners, responsibility, conflict resolution, empathy and emotional control. The pack is focused from the perspective of the parent raising a child, making sure that you raise your child with very, very good character values or bad ones if you're an awful parent. These character values may change your sims when they're an adult. For example, if a sim grows up with high manners, they have a new polite introduction which can give them positive moodlets and let them gain friendly relationships faster. On the other hand, if a sim is very low on the manners value, they might often fart a lot or swear a lot. They also might find it harder to gain relationships with other sims, so it has some consequences. I wouldn't say the pack has that many consequences for adulthood, so it's not really that in depth. The pack comes with some cool features. For example, it comes with like homework projects, so your sim can bring like a DIY volcano project home from school and the parents have to make it with them. It's pretty cool. The pack comes with a private journal, so you can do diary entries as a kid. Another random feature of the pack is that you can set curfews for the children so that they must come home by a certain time. The pack comes with an okay amount of cast. If you want some more clothing for kids and teens, I would say it's a pretty good pack, but it's not very good for adults. It comes with some build by. A lot of people really like the build by stuff in this pack. It's basically very vanilla American suburban stuff because that's a theme of the pack. But yeah, it's quite nice build by stuff to be fair. Now, just to clarify, with the high school years pack, when your sims go to high school, it does glitch out a bit with the parenthood pack. So with the parenthood pack, for example, your sims bring home special school projects. But if you have high school years installed, it kind of glitches it and it ruins it a bit. The sims team haven't addressed this and it's a really big issue. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's really been acknowledged or it's going to be fixed anytime soon. There's not really that much cross pack compatibility with the packs either, even though they're very similar themes. So that's just something to be aware of. The next game pack is Jungle Adventures. This is actually one of my favourite game packs. It comes with a new world of Salvadorada. It comes with seven lots. This is a vacation world, a lot like Outdoor Retreat, although it's a lot bigger. The world is actually very, very beautiful. As you can see, it has a very, very specific theme and it's really, really well done, I must say. The pack is all about going on adventures. In the brand new world, you can actually go to secret temples and you can solve puzzles and traps. It's not that deep. It's not like you as a player have to put logic in to try and solve the puzzles. It's more something that's based on your sim skill. If they're hiring certain skills, they can resolve the puzzles easier. When you reach the end of some puzzles, you can unlock some treasure and artifacts that you can take home. It comes with some display cabinets in the pack that you can use if you want to collect them all. In addition to that, it also comes with a local town area where you can learn the Salvadorian culture skill, where you can learn the language and things. It also comes with an archaeology workbench so you can do archaeology things. You cannot live in the world unfortunately. That is something that I know a lot of people ask. You can't do that unfortunately. But I would say it's actually one of the stronger game packs in terms of features. It doesn't come with that much cast but the cast is very like touristy if you know what I mean. Touristy adventure explorer outfits giving me Tomb Raider. It comes with a lot of build by more than any other pack as you can see. It's very Latin American inspired. It's very very cool. If you like build by, I definitely recommend this pack. Strangerville is the next pack. This is one of the most unique game packs we have The Sims 4 and that's because it's very, I wouldn't say it's not open, but it has a very linear storyline and it has a very specific theme. Seeming it's only a game pack, it actually comes with quite a big new world. As you can see, it's very like South American style. When you live in the world, you get pop-ups about following a certain storyline. The game takes you through a very, very specific storyline about a, a very secret thing happening. I'm not going to reveal it. It's quite a kooky and interesting story. It almost has kind of like RPG elements, which is kind of cool. Obviously, when you've completed this one singular storyline, it's completed. Although a lot of people say they enjoy replaying it again, and I do too, to be fair. So don't let that put you off just because it's a linear storyline. This is a very, very interesting and unique game pack. If you like the idea of loosely following a story to break up your gameplay, I definitely recommend the pack. But just to confirm, you don't have to follow the story line like you can live in the world you can do anything that you want in the world and not follow the storyline you can edit all the lots that's fine the storyline thing is just optional the pack also comes with a military career which is a semi-active career what i mean by semi-active by the way is that sometimes it's a rabbit hole experience sometimes it's not apart from the storyline itself the pack itself doesn't come with any major brand new gameplay features such as skills or things but i would say it's a pretty fun pack it is a very kooky supernaturally style pack if you like family fun game 
gameplay, it's probably not the pack for you, but it is very much like Stranger Things vibes. That's how I describe the pack. It comes with a pretty small amount of cast and it's very hillbilly themed if you like that stuff. It comes with an okay amount of build buy, but again, it's very like, uh, is hillbilly the right, the right word? Like Wild West themed, maybe that's a better phrase. But in general, I would say it's a pretty well-rounded pack. Next up, we have Realm of Magic, our next major occult pack. This is a pack about spellcasters and making magic. It comes with a new world of Glimbrook. It only has five lots, very, very small, I know. But it also comes with a brand new secret world, which is a Realm of Magic area. This is basically where the magic school is and you can do special magic things and you can learn to be a spellcaster. In order to get there, you have to go through a magic portal. The world itself is pretty beautiful. I would say it looks like every other Sims 4 world, which is an old mining town style world. Spellcasters have basically the same needs as humans, but they have this little gauge at the top, which is their spellcaster charge. So they don't just have unlimited amount of spells. If you overload them, they might not be able to do spells anymore. They have a talent point system, which is very similar to the vampire skill tree system, where you have to earn talent points. And with these, you can unlock new kinds of skills. One of the great things about Realm of Magic is the spell casting system. So they have three different main kinds of magics, practical magic, mischief magic, and untamed. The pack also comes with familiars, which are just little pets that you can use to follow you around, which give you some small buffs as a magician. If you have the cats and dogs pack, you can also use your pets as familiars too. The pack also comes with alchemy from which you can cast some potions. A lot of other Sims YouTubers don't like Realm of Magic, but I honestly don't understand why. I think it's a really well-rounded pack. It comes with an average amount of creator sim. A lot of this is very kooky, magical stuff. If you've ever watched Sabrina, the Netflix show, it's kind of like that style. Very traditional magic, but there's no witches hats. It comes with a small amount of build buy. Again, it's very kooky, magical themed, but I'd say it's a pretty all right pack to be fair. The next pack is Journey to Batu. This is probably the most hated pack in The Sims forever. The pack comes with the vacation world. So the pack entails you going to the Journey to Batu world. The world is based off the Disneyland resort world, the real one. Many Simmers have speculated that this pack was basically an advertisement for Disneyland because EA does have partnerships with Disney. It is considered the most cash grabby capitalistic Sims 4 pack for that reason. The pack is, I guess, kind of similar to Strangerville in that you follow missions. These missions are basically fighting to control the world of Batu. You can join one of three different groups, being the Resistance, the First Order, or the Scoundrels. You can create your own lightsaber and have a little lightsaber fights. You can make your own little droid companion who can help you do certain things. The pack itself is not really well thought through in terms of gameplay, if I'm being honest. It doesn't really come with that much stuff to do. It's a very, very isolated experience. Just to confirm, you can't live in the Journey to Batu world. You cannot even build on it because there's no lots on it. It's basically a very strange rabbit hole experience that's got absolutely nothing to do with The Sims 4. The thing about Sims 4 packs in general is that they're supposed to enhance The Sims 4 gameplay and change the way that you play The Sims. The thing about the Journey to Batu pack is it's not The Sims at all. Like it's got nothing to do with The Sims. It just happens to be put in the shell of The Sims 4. The aliens in the game don't really function as regular aliens. They're actually just ordinary human Sims. As you can see, the pack comes with a massive amount of cast, but you can only use that cast in the Star Wars Journey to Batu world, rendering it kind of pointless. A lot of it's alien cast too. It comes with a high to average amount of build buy, but again, this is build buy that you can only really use in the Journey to Batu world, but you can't actually build anything in the Journey to Batu world, rendering it kind of useless. This pack, honestly, if you love Star Wars, I recommend just getting an official Star Wars game for the same price that you can get Journey to Batu. Like you can just get an, an official Star Wars game. Do you know what I mean? So I personally really do not recommend this pack at all, if I'm being brutally honest, even if you are a fan of Star Wars. The next pack we have is Dream Home Decorator. This pack was released in 2021. Now, I think it's important to explain in The Sims 4 world, 2021 is kind of when The Sims 4 entered its flop era and The Sims team very clearly lost motivation with the game. This is where all packs go downhill, like with, for example, high school years. So bear with me with this one. Dream Home Decorator follows a very specific career of basically decorating other people's homes. The pack introduced a likes and dislikes system and you go to somebody's home and you ask them about what they like. They might say, I like the color red. I like 
like modern decor and you basically do a room for them based on that they might ask you to renovate a specific room like a bathroom or they might just ask you to renovate any kind of room sometimes it's fun it's a cool challenge the actual pack was not really made that well unfortunately and it's very easy to exploit for example they might say oh I really like the color red and then you can renovate a room literally just by doing something like removing all the furniture using red walls red carpet and put a, a random red poop in the middle of the floor and they will say bravo good job like it is very very superficial unfortunately the way the pack works I would say this is the weakest pack just because it comes with a Korea and that's the only unique thing it comes with of course it comes with Creative Sim and Build Buy it contains a pretty average amount of Creative Sim stuff I'd say it's pretty nice Creative Sim stuff and of course it comes with the higher range of Build Buy objects 135 as you can see it comes with Build Buy objects that we've never had in the Sims 4 before for example it comes with sectional sofas it comes with a tabletop oven which we've never had before the reason why I'd say this is very weak is when you compare it to other packs it hasn't come with the world it hasn't really come with a brand new lock type it hasn't really come with new skills it's just come with nothing other than a career and the career is about build buy mode which is something that we already have a lot of people love this pack because build buy has become a lot more popular recently but in terms of gameplay I would just say it's not worth it the next game pack is my wedding stories this is another flop era sims 4 pack <laughs> We really have entered flop era, unfortunately. My Wedding Stories is a pack about getting married. I think it's important to note that you can already get married in The Sims 4. There is already a base game wedding event. This just makes it a little bit more complex. The pack is about parties. So there are a few different kinds of parties that you can do. I personally do not understand weddings myself at all, but it comes with like an engagement party, a wedding rehearsal party, the actual wedding party. It comes with like like a stag do hen do style party. All of these parties are basically standard sims for events where they go out and want to drink something and dance and eat something. It hasn't really offered that much. Obviously the main thing is about the wedding. You can do things by planning the wedding. So the game comes with some brand new cakes that you can use. You can basically buy the cakes. You can plan the outfits and things. You can plan what food there's gonna be. It comes with a brand new dance floor to dance and have your first wedding dance comes with buffet tables. You can get married from a variety of different perspectives from different cultures. It's not just Western style marriages, they have a lot of different things. As you can see, the pack actually comes with a high amount of cast and that's because it comes with a lot of formal stuff from different cultures. It comes with a small amount of build buy. The build buy is basically just wedding party stuff. Before I go on a full on crazy rant about this pack, I may as well talk about the world. It's a pretty big world to be fair. I believe it's Italian inspired and you can clearly see why. It's a very beachy style world. It is very beautiful. You can actually build on this beach lot here which is cool. The pack unfortunately is just very very lacklustre and unfortunately like Dine Out this pack is very glitchy and does not work very well. Allegedly, I have to say allegedly in my opinion based off no official evidence this pack was released in an unfinished state and that is basically a unanimous thing that almost every single Sims 4 player believes and that's because the pack genuinely does not work when it was released it was horrendous look at any simmers let's play this pack it genuinely just did not work when i say it didn't work like literally nothing worked about the pack it was awful incredibly glitchy even to this day i have tried to play this pack only a couple of months ago after all of the major bug fixes and it still didn't work for me i still couldn't have a successful wedding this pack is literally broken like it is awful that the sims team is still selling this at full price despite the fact that it's clearly a faulty price products. A lot of the features that enhance the base game weddings, for example, being able to set a dress code. The dress code feature has never ever worked for me. Sims have always arrived at their weddings in really strange random outfits. The actual interactions such as going down an aisle have never worked for me. They've never worked for other Sims YouTubers. The gameplay is very awkward and dumb. I just recommend avoiding this pack like the plague if I'm being brutally honest. The next game pack we have is Werewolves. Now, this this is where The Sims 4 came out of its flop era temporarily. Only temporarily. That's because The Sims team clearly love occult packs. Every single time we get a strange pack or an occult pack or a supernatural pack, it's always a lot more in depth than any other pack. Clearly The Sims team have bias for these kinds of packs. So if you do love occults, good for you. This pack comes with a pretty big world for a game pack. It only comes with five lots, but the actual
actual wider world is actually quite big. It's a mining town style world as with every other world in The Sims 4, as I said before. I wouldn't say there's that much going on in the world, by the way. It's very empty and shallow like other Sims 4 worlds. There's not really that much to interact with or do, but it's a very beautiful world nevertheless. Of course, you don't care about the world, you care about the werewolves themselves. As with the other cults, werewolves have an ability system, which is pretty cool. They have something called dormant abilities, which are special ones. They also have temperaments, which affect your fury. Fury is a meter that develops and when it's at the top, your werewolf sim goes into rage mode and you can't really control them. It's pretty funny. The cool thing about this one is actually the werewolf's packs ability. They have something called pack values, which affect the way that the pack behaves together. They have different hierarchies in the packs, just as real world wolves do. And depending on what level, depends on what you can do in the pack. It's actually a pretty cool and in-depth social system with werewolves, I must say. Werewolves, I will say, don't have that many interactions outside of their werewolf bubble. Whereas vampires can do things like compelling other sims. Werewolves don't really do anything outside of their little bubble. That's something I think you should be aware of. But it's a pretty cool gameplay feature. It comes with a lot of creator sim actually. And that's obviously because it comes with a brand new werewolves feature in Cass. I would say the werewolves are really, really cool. I will say in my opinion, they do look more like cats than dogs or wolves. I'm not gonna lie, but it's a pretty fun feature nevertheless to mess around with the creator sim for werewolves. It comes with a low to average amount of build buy. The build buy is very grungy and it's very kind of broken and shabby, which fits the theme of the pack quite well. I would say it is a very well-rounded occult pack and not too glitchy. So next up we have stuff packs. The first stuff pack ever released is luxury party stuff. It comes with some like random party things. So we got a drinking fountain, a buffet table, and that's basically it. I would say this is probably the weakest stuff pack of all of the Sims 4 packs, if I'm being brutally honest. If you own any of the more recent packs, I personally don't recommend this. If you especially own My Wedding Story, it already comes with like a buffet table and a drink fountain and things. So I honestly just do not recommend this pack at all. The next one is Perfect Patio Stuff. Again, I will say it's a pretty lackluster pack. It doesn't really come with that much. It comes with literally no new gameplay features. Originally, the hot tub was an exclusive feature of the pack, but we officially got a Sims 4 hot tub in the base game. So it doesn't come with anything unique. It basically just comes with patio furniture. If you feel like your Sims game is missing patio star furniture, maybe you can justify the pack. But I honestly think it's very, very tiny and probably not worth your time or money. Cool kitchen stuff basically comes with a modern kitchen and that's basically it. It comes with an ice cream machine. That is a new gameplay feature. If you're a builder and you want a new kitchen that's very modern looking, get the pack. Otherwise I wouldn't bother. Spooky stuff. I actually quite like this pack. It's very random. It basically is a Halloween inspired pack. The new gameplay functionality is that it comes with a pumpkin carving station to make pumpkins. It comes with a spooky candy bowl and you also have a new spooky party, which is basically a fancy dress party. And it also comes with a lot of fancy dress creator sim stuff. It's basically a pack if you want a Halloween themed party. Just to confirm, if you already have the seasons pack, although you can have parties with the seasons pack, you can basically make a Halloween style party with the seasons pack, but it's not the same. It comes with like a trick or treat event. I would say if you own seasons, you probably will not need spooky stuff because seasons already comes with a lot of spooky style stuff. But if you love the idea of a costume party that's very Halloween-y themed and you like kooky stuff, then I say it's an all right pack. The next one is movie hangout stuff. It's a very boho themed pack. The pack comes with an outdoor TV, well, an outdoor movie screen projector, and it comes with the ability to watch movies, which we didn't actually have before. It also comes with a popcorn machine. If you want your Sims to watch movies with popcorn, then by all means get the pack, but it's not like the most engaging, incredible stuff pack. As with all stuff packs, it's just a very small bit of gameplay. If you do just want an outdoor movie screen projector, the Moonlight Sheet Kit, which is a lot cheaper than movie hangout stuff, it does come with an outdoor projector. The next one is romantic garden stuff. The build buying cast is outdoorsy stuff. It's very Victorian themed, comes with hedges and things. The special object this stuff pack comes with is a wishing well where you can wish for certain things. The next one is kids room stuff. This comes with an average amount of cast and a lot of build buy for your kid's bedroom. Just to confirm, this is stuff for not toddlers really. It's really just stuff for the child life stage only. It comes with something called a Void Critters Battle Station, which is like a game the kids can play with and a new collectible called Void Critters and it comes with a puppet theater. 
there's not really that much gameplay for kids in The Sims 4, unfortunately. So if you want a little bit more kids gameplay, this is really great stuff to make their bedrooms more interesting. The next one is backyard stuff. This actually comes with some cool new gameplay objects. It comes with a brand new water slide feature that your Sims can use, which I think is pretty fun. It also randomly comes with a bird feeder and it comes with wind chimes. If you own the seasons pack, this is quite a cool addition to summer style gameplay. The next one is vintage glamour stuff. Probably one of my favorite stuff packs actually. The theme is obviously vintage glamour. Now, if you already own the get famous pack, the build buying cast is very similar to that with vintage glamour. It comes with a brand new vanity table, which is a brand new gameplay feature. It also comes with a butler. Unfortunately, I will say the butler feature is quite glitchy. The butlers are supposed to cook for you, tidy up, greet guests, fulfill almost every request, look after the child. It doesn't really work that well, unfortunately, but it, it, it does work moderately. My favorite thing to do is get the vampires pack and hire a butler. And the butler is basically an infinite source of blood for your vampires. The next stuff pack is bowling night stuff. Comes with a very small amount of cast, which is basically just bowling outfits and an average amount of build buy. It basically just comes with bowling. That's it. Nothing really that special. I did tell you guys The Sims 4 is a very capitalistic game. The next one is fitness stuff. It comes with a small amount of cast, which is just fitness wear. And it comes with an average amount of build buy. Not the most riveting pack in the world. It comes with some brand new fitness objects. A brand new feature is the climbing wall feature. There's also a new TV workout option where you can work out on TV, which we didn't have before. And it also randomly comes with earbuds. The next one is toddler stuff. Toddlers are the most ignored life stage in The Sims 4. That's because they weren't actually released in the base game. They were released much later on. So if you want stuff for your toddler, this is basically the only pack that you can really do it with. With the pack, you can host play dates with other Sims kids. You can do this in your backyard or at a local park. The pack comes with some random playground objects. It's just a little enhancement to toddler gameplay, but it's nothing special. The next one is laundry day stuff. If you fancy washing clothes in The Sims 4, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. It's basically like wicker themed. It comes with a washing machine and a tumble dryer, and it also comes with an old fashioned way to wash your clothes, like by scrubbing it. And it also comes with an outdoor clothes line. Interestingly enough, this is actually one of the most requested stuff packs for The Sims 4. I don't know why people want to do chores in this game, but there we go. The next one is My First Pet Stuff. My First Pet Stuff is the most controversial pack for The Sims 4. Well, the most controversial stuff pack anyway. And that's because in order for this stuff pack to work, you actually need to first own The Sims 4 cats and dogs. So this stuff pack is not an expansion for The Sims 4 base game. It is an expansion pack for The Sims 4 cats and dogs, which is also an expansion pack. It is DLC for DLC. A lot of the build buy objects for this pack look very similar to the build buy objects for cats and dogs. This led a lot of Simmers to believe that allegedly this pack comes with content that was withheld from cats and dogs and upsold later on as DLC to make more money. Cats and dogs is one of the biggest features for The Sims 4. So pets has always been one of the biggest and most popular features for all of The Sims games, Sims 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it makes sense from their business perspective to try and do that to make more money. But unfortunately, it is very capitalistic -y. The build buy for this pack is horrendous, by the way, is so ugly. The cast is mostly for pets and the cast that did come for other life stages has been considered ugly by many other players. In terms of gameplay, it comes with a rodent cage, which you can have a hamster or a rat or a hedgehog, for example. And that's basically it. The next one is Moschino stuff. That's right, the brand Moschino. The pack comes with some fashion from Moschino into The Sims 4. It doesn't actually come with that much fashion, which is rather surprising, seeming it's a pack about fashion. Of the fashion that does come with the pack, a lot of Simmers have labelled it as very questionable and not really that fashionable. It's quite a controversial one. It comes with a lot of cool build buy. The build buy is extremely modern. It comes with a freelance fashion photographer career from which you can take pictures and sell the pictures. It doesn't come with a modeling career because I know that's what a lot of people think, but it only does it from the perspective of the photographer. Just to confirm, photography is something that's in the base game and it's also something that was a big feature with Get to Work. So the photography feature is something that comes with get to work so you don't need Moschino stuff to do that. The I guess the only thing it comes with is maybe like customizable magazine covers but it's not really that deep of a stuff pack. The next one is tiny living stuff. Tiny living stuff is based on the idea of living in a micro home. In terms of gameplay it comes with a 
new tiny home residential lot type where you basically have three different tiers of tiny homes depending on how many tiers you have depends on the lot perks for example if you have a super tiny micro home you get higher comfort moot lit so you can increase your skills faster plants grow faster etc if you're a builder in the sims 4 i would say the pack is a fun challenge because it adds a limitation to your game although you can still build tiny homes without this pack the main gameplay feature it comes with is a murphy bed which is one of those like a bed that turns into a sofa the only thing is the pack itself doesn't actually come with tiny home stuff some of the stuff is very small but like the whole point of a tiny home is that you have a house that is tiny but the pack doesn't really facilitate owning a tiny home for example the murphy bed still takes up the exact same amount of space as a regular double bed so in that sense it's not really well thought through the pack but if you like building i guess it's fun the next stuff pack is a totally random pack called nifty knitting it comes with quite a lot of crate sim stuff and a small amount of build buy the pack is focused solely on the gameplay aspect of knitting you can knit special outfits you can knit socks and things you can knit jumpers you can knit build buy objects too very randomly i actually think it's quite a funny pack it comes with a heavy metal radio station to listen to heavy metal whilst you're knitting which i think is kind of funny it comes with a feature called plopsy which is the sims version of etsy from which you can sell your knitted stuff too it's not very well thought through you can actually just sell stuff from your sims inventory for basically the same price so unfortunately it's not very in-depth as a career but it's an interesting gameplay feature nevertheless the next pack is called paranormal stuff this comes with a quite a lot of cast high to average amount and a lot of build buy i would say this is the strongest stuff pack ever released for the sims 4 and that's because it honestly contains so much stuff for a standard stuff pack it has a very like new orleans bayou style theme it comes with a new haunted house residential lot type if you do have this lot type haunted paranormal things can happen at your home it comes with a brand new seance table and a paranormal investigator career where you go to other people's houses and you're basically a ghost hunter sucking up all of the ghosts in your vacuum this pack comes with bone hilda who is a skeletal maid who works in a very similar way to standard maids in the sims 4 comes with a crystal ball i would say this is a really depth impact in that it comes with a lot of stuff as it comes with a career comes with a new lot type it's really really funny if you love supernatural stuff i honestly recommend this stuff back a lot next up we have kits kits are very very small they only come with one thing which is either build buy or create a sim they don't come with much they're very very cheap but these are very micro transactiony thank you to capitalism that we have these packs if you love building in the sims 4 you might buy a building kit if you love create a sim you might buy a create a sim kit but they're not really that in depth i'm not going to go over every single pack but to go over them very briefly there is one gameplay kit which is called bust the dust it's a pack about vacuuming unfortunately the pack is very broken i actually don't recommend this pack the backlash was so bad that the sims team have basically given up on gameplay kits now so we only have build buy and cast there haven't been that many release but to go over the cast kits you can see they all contain roughly the same amount of cast same for the build buy kits they contain a similar amount of build buy if you're going to fall them i'd say go for them Other Otherwise, I think your money is better spent on game packs and expansion packs. So this next section is for PC players only, which is a mod section. Mods are unofficial, not afflicted or associated with EA. They're made by third parties, usually just people who are very talented. I'm not going to teach you how to install mods in this video because that is something that you can Google yourself, but it is very easy. To give you an example of some very popular ones, one is called the Sims 4 IKEA home stuff where somebody actually took real life IKEA furniture and they basically built it so you can have it in the sims 4 which is pretty cool there's an infinite amount of mods that do so many random things a very popular one is the wonderful whims mod this mod adds an attractiveness system personality types it comes with some minor additions to interactions between sims it comes with a change to pregnancy and it comes with menstrual cycles it comes with miscarriage it comes with new woohoo options it comes with stds it comes with birth control mods are something that's very very specific and because it's not officially endorsed by EA sometimes they work sometimes they break if there's a major update and there's so many infinite possibilities so I'm not going to talk about them all here but I have created a playlist for you guys so I will pop the playlist in the link in the description below one thing I love to do and other simmers love to do is do things like creating tier lists where we create tiers over what are our favorite packs based on various different things I have a video where I ranked all
all DLC packs for The Sims 4, all based on my personal opinion. So if you want a more opinionated approach, make sure you check out that video here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope this was useful. See you in the next one.